A lot of things go unnoticed in life. You may put in a few extra hours at work and your boss will tell you it's part of the job. You may feel good about your new haircut only to find out no one really cares. But people will always notice just how much money you stole from them. I don't know what these people were thinking, and I don't think they realized that besides wealthy investors, they were hurting middle-class investors, retired police officers, firefighters. It's outrageous. First selectman Ken Flato can add his town of Fairfield, Connecticut, to Bernard Madoff's list of victims. The town's 58,000-person pension fund just lost $42 million overnight. And history sure has a way of repeating itself, sometimes in bigger ways. The Democratic Party finds itself in the middle of the biggest financial fraud case in U.S. history. A cryptocurrency company, you know, like the Bitcoin things, just lost $2 billion of its customers' money. They didn't just lose it in the market, it's just gone. Someone stole it. And the company called FTX just went bankrupt after they blew up $32 billion. The crypto market in chaos after the collapse of the FTX exchange with a new set of questions on where billions and billions of dollars went. A criminal investigation of its founder, Sam Bankman-Fried, has been opened in the Bahamas. This is being called the worst disaster in the history of crypto. This is bigger than Bernie Madoff, but unlike Bernie Madoff, who was getting rich off a Ponzi scheme, the Democratic Party was getting rich off of FTX. Now, FTX came onto the scene in 2019, and it spent $10 million to put Joe Biden in the White House in 2020. And the guy running FTX, the second biggest Democrat donor in the midterms, after Soros, of course, spent $40 million to get Democrats elected. Wonder why someone like John Fetterman was able to raise as much as four times as much cash as Oz? Well, you can thank Sam Bankman-Fried, who ran this crypto scheme out of a penthouse in the Bahamas. Hi, my name is Sam, and this is my story. Sam has crazy hair. Sam is vegan. Sam sleeps five hours a night. Sam lives in the Bahamas with 10 roommates. Sam is 29 years old only, but Sam has $22 billion. And he wants to donate all of it to charity. And the charity was the Democratic Party. Look at Sam right there behind George Soros. Soros paid for a crime wave, and Sam may have committed a crime to stop a red wave. The guy was throwing so much money around, it got the owner a seat right next to Clinton. And he got an invite to Bill's after party with celebrities like Katy Perry, of course. You know, Clinton's really got an eye for mega donors. First Epstein. Sam Bankman-Fried, who they call SPF. If you spend enough money on Democrats, they don't care how you got the money as long as it gets to them. All the celebrities were jumping in, too. Larry David was doing commercials for the guy. Tom Brady and Giselle were ambassadors. The John Fetterman of cryptocurrency, SPF, was just at the White House, actually. He got two closed-doors meetings with Biden's senior advisor in the spring right around the time Biden was shipping billions to Ukraine. The funny thing is, Ukraine was an investor in FTX. <laughs> you may be asking, why is a country in the middle of a war investing in crypto? Shouldn't they be buying weapons? Or, I mean, if they have to invest in anything, doesn't crypto sound a little risky for Zelensky? You wouldn't want an investment with a solid rate of return and years of stable growth? No. Zelensky thought he'd give it to a guy living in a tax haven, fresh out of college with funny hair. Well, when Democrats are sending you billions of dollars of weaponry, the least you could do is reward their favorite mega donor. And what did FTX do with the money Ukraine invested? Well, they plowed it right back into the Democratic Party. Democrats send money to Ukraine, Ukraine sends money to FTX, and FTX sends money to the Democrats' campaigns. Now, I don't know if this is war profiteering or money laundering. I don't even know, but it needs to be investigated. And we don't really know who's getting what because SPF, the crypto kid, who looks like a mini Madoff, likes his money in the dark. So, in the end, I want to do what's right for the country. You think every money you spend in politics should be disclosed publicly? Are you comfortable with that? If there was a norm where every dollar that ever in 
donated mm -hmm. in politics was to be disclosed publicly, um, I would have a, a lot of sympathy for that. I think I might support it. I haven't thought carefully about it enough to know. But well, it I sounds so. like what you're saying is maybe there's some donations that you have made that you wouldn't make if you knew they were going to be immediately public. So I think I don't I don't generally think about it that way. <laughs> I mean, look, look, can you believe Chuck Todd? I mean, first they fall for Avenatti and then they fall for this guy. I mean, was it even his money to begin with? It looks like it was investor money he was spending on Democrats. The Wall Street Journal reports FTX was cracking into customers' accounts and using their funds for other stuff. And then when customers wanted to withdraw their money, a lot of it was gone. The Justice Department and the SEC have launched an investigation because this looks like the mega donor also lied to Congress. We have a transparent system um, where all of our data is, all of our public market data um, is openly available and free where risk parameters are transparent. Oh, so transparent. Did he think he was too big to fail because he had regulators in his pocket? Probably. I mean, you're bulletproof when you can buy politicians. And this guy was planning on buying Biden with a billion bucks. I imagine you have some probability distribution in your mind of how much money you might give in the next election cycle. Like, give me some number. Uh, I would guess north of 100 million. So if that's a floor, what's the ceiling? Like a billion? Might you give a billion? Yeah, I think that's a decent, like, thing to look at. <laughs> so the Democrats' second biggest donor just blew up right after he helped Democrats keep the Senate. Oops, that's a shame. Perfect timing for Chuck Schumer, though. But this was a family affair. The crypto fraudster's brother has a job in Congress, of course. He works on the Financial Services Committee, and he works for a Democrat. So the guy in charge of oversight is staffed by family members of Minnie Madoff. Whatever happened to the $32 billion anyway? I wonder if there was any red flags. Oh, here's one. The person running cash flow at FTX isn't good at math. <laughs> use very little math. Um, use a lot of, like, uh, elementary school math. So I see those uh, abstract math glasses are not... I know the yeah. I'd not yeah. require you never have all the information so you kind of just have to make a make your best guess based on what you can see we tend not to have things like stop losses I think those aren't necessarily a great risk management tool yeah I'm trying to think of a good example of a trade where I've lost a ton of money um, well I don't know I probably don't want to go into specifics too much yeah, with that <laughs> you had executives bragging they don't do risk management. <laughs> and that, by the way, that was Minnie Madoff's girlfriend. She was living in a penthouse in one of the world's famous tax havens with him in the Bahamas. There were 10 kids working in this office and they were all sleeping with each other. It was a polyamorous penthouse. It's what you call a pump and dump scheme. And no one noticed a thing until a week after the Democrats kept the Senate. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.